Hello, my name is Allison Forrest, and I am a senior at the University of Houston, Victoria. I go to their Katy campus. Um, I will be majoring in computer science and mathematics, and I expect to be graduating in the fall of 2021. All right, I am in a digital forensics class, and today we're going to be talking about disk imaging and its usefulness in digital forensics. Great. So first, let's talk a little bit about evidence integrity. Um, so I'm going to bring up something called spoliation, and that's when evidence has been damaged or altered. And this typically happens when physical evidence is burned, um, gets coffee spilled on it. But with digital evidence, it can happen by simply hitting the delete button or hitting a backspace on a document. Um, that causes evidence to be altered and therefore um, it could lead to faulty conclusions and the faulty conclusions can lead to unfavorable or wrong court outcomes. All right. So this is generally something we want to avoid, especially in digital forensics where it's completely preventable. So this led to the development of disk imaging tools. So a disk imaging tool is a forensic tool that copies bit for bit the contents and structure of a disk volume or of an entire data storage device, such as an optical disk. And an important thing to note is that it is bit for bit. And not only does it copy the data stored in the hard drive or optical disk, it also copies the structural information of the file system that is in the disk. So before we get into talking more about disk images, I want to discuss something we've also talked about in class, something called a disk clone. So these are often mixed up and I want to go through the differences just to highlight truly what a disk image is. So a disk image, again, is going to be a bit for bit copy of a hard drive or optical drive um, and its structure that cannot be used for booting a computer. So it is not functional as a hard drive or as an optical disk because it does not have the same structure as what was originally copied. It simply um, copied the data of the structure. So an image is usually compressed to save space and usually also omits unused space uh, in the image. And it takes a lot of time to create. This bit for bit stream can take hours and hours to create. So this is completely different from something called a disk clone. So a disk clone is similar. It's an exact copy of a hard drive, um, but this one can be used as a backup hard drive because it is bootable. Typically disk clones, um, whatever they're copied onto, has the same structure as what is being copied and the information is copied straight into that file system, the file structure. So it is a functional copy. And because it is functional, it is usually uncompressed and um, can be larger than a disk image. Um, but this can be done in under an hour. It can be done very quickly as compared to a disk image. So uh, we will be talking about disk images specifically. We will not be talking about disk clones. So just don't confuse those. <laughs> So why are we doing a bit by bit image um, in a disk image? Why not just copy um, the information inside the structure? Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about slack space first. So slack space is going to be unallocated space in a storage system. Typically the first thousand or so bytes is not even used in the storage system. So nefariously or not, evidence um, and items can be stored in this unallocated space, um, which is again, unaccessible by the system. So if we took an image and simply used the system, the storage system to copy over information, we're missing this slack space that could be copied over. But by using a bit by bit copy, we're able to copy and access the slack space that would otherwise be unaccessible. So by using a bit by bit copy, we're accessing evidence that would otherwise be overlooked it could change the outcome in court, could change, um, yeah, the outcome in court. <laughs> so the first thing we want to do when we get this bit by bit copy is we want to apply a cryptographic hash to it. So just to kind of go over that, um, a hash takes 
uh, as you can see this picture, hopefully not covered up by my face, it takes a message, which in this case would be our disk image, it runs it through a hash, and it creates a hash value based on what is it, whatever is put into the hash. It creates a unique value. So uh, we apply the hash to our disk image and get, say, the number 5 to uh, the as the hash value for the disk image. If we see any changes in this number, say suddenly we see our hash value is at the value 6, then it's guaranteed that our disk image has been altered. So because the image has been altered, it means that our evidence may have been altered by our own doing. So this could lead again to faulty evidence and unwanted court outcomes. So uh, we use the cryptographic hash to look out for changes in our disk images immediately after they are made. Um, we're going to get into some disk imaging utilities now. So these allow for the creation and viewing of disk image files. They're generally um, going to be read only um, and do not allow for the editing of disk images just to um, ensure the integrity of the evidence. Again, um, we, we generally use the cryptographic hash to ensure that our, uh, our disk images are going unchanged because if they do change, then it could be changing some of our evidence leading to faulty evidence, leading to unwanted court outcomes. So again, uh, a lot of these uh, disk image tools are going to be viewing only. So here's a few examples just to familiarize you with them. Um, these are all disk imaging tools. They offer other services as well, but um, what we're going to be focusing on is their disk imaging tools. So just a little bit about each one. We have NCASE. Um, this one was established in 1998 by the Guidance Software Company. We also have X-Ways. This one generally runs on Windows, and something to note about it is that it's fully portable. Um, it can be ported into a something like a USB and can be uh, moved computer to computer. Next, we have Forensic Toolkit, uh, FTK. This one is made by Access Data. Um, the FTK imager is actually separate from FTK, and it is a standalone program that is actually the um, disk imaging tool. Finally, we have WinHex, and this one's a little more unique um, because it does allow for the editing of disk images. It's also made by X-Ways, um, but because it allows for the editing of disk images, you might also want to use something like WriteBlock. Now, WriteBlock is going to be a program that ensures whatever files you select, in this case the disk image, that they cannot be altered in any way. So, WinHex may be paired with something like WriteBlock. Alright, so here's some disk imaging formats um, that our disk image tools may use. I'm just going to go through each one for you, just to familiarize you with them. So first we have the Apple Disk Image. This is obviously generally used on Mac operating systems. We have the IMG image, which is referred to as a raw disk image, the bit by bit stream. We have VHD, a virtual hard disk. Um, this contains disk partitions and file format like in an HDD. We have virtual disk image, the image of a disk used in virtual machines. And we have VMDK, which is a virtual machine disk, which describes containers for virtual machines. Right? So there are many more um, disk image formats out there, but these are going to be primarily the most used, the most often that you will see in the field. Again, um, these are going to be the most common disk image formats that you see in the field. If a disk imaging tool can follow most of these formats, then um, you can use um, disk images that you've made with other tools on it. So uh, next we're going to talk about disk image file sizing. So because the disk images um, can run very large, and this is due to the fact that not only do they have to copy over all the information on an HDD or optical disk, but they also have to copy over um, the storage structure on the disk. 
and the data regarding that. So it can run from the size of the original HDD to even larger. So some general fixes for this are going to be um, omitting unused space from the image. If it's a bit by bit stream and we're not seeing any information being used um, in certain bits, then we're going to go ahead and omit those from the image. And then the other uh, fix we have for this is going to be to compress the used space in an image. And this is going to save tons of space. Unfortunately, um, it does not affect the time it takes to create the um, disk image. All right. So um, now we're going to talk about mobile imaging tools. So this is generally a new field that was developed in the early 2000s. Um, with the growth and popularity of cell phones, new tools were used, uh, were needed to analyze their memory. So typically, you can't just plug in a phone um, to some software for um, disk imaging because that disk image tool will generally not understand the storage structure of the phone. So some companies, seeing this, um, now offer mobile memory imaging solutions, and two of whom um, that I have listed, you'll see um, Access Data and Encase uh, also offer um, disk imaging solutions that we saw before. And then new names we see now are SleuthKit and ESI Analyst. Okay. So um, disk imaging is very important in computer forensics. It's used in the acquisition and analysis of digital data. So um, in the acquisition, it can be used for creating that copy so that the data can be delivered to data analysts um, to um, search for evidence. And of course, the analysis of digital data, that copy that is created can be used as an experimental copy. So again, it prevents tampering with the original data evidence because you have now an experimental copy that does not affect the original data. Um, a forensically sound copy is an exact duplicate of the original device. And again, we can ensure that it is a forensically sound copy by using a cryptographic hash, um, as explained earlier, to ensure that the data is not changed in the copy. And as I said again earlier, a write blocker can also ensure that the image cannot be altered. Right? So going over again the importance of disk imaging and digital forensics. Disk imaging makes it possible to acquire forensically sound copies of data. And without images, it would be harder to keep original data unaltered and readily available. So disk imaging is incredibly important in the forensic field, especially for digital. It is incredibly important to make yourself aware of disk imaging tools and um, things like the cryptographic hash that can keep your disk images um, forensically sound. So that's going to conclude this presentation um, regarding disk images. Um, thank you for listening and um, have a nice day.